Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to Wildermyth, where last time we had some very solid plans in place to go and scout out this area down here, because the game wants us to do that. It's telling us to go and scout out the wonderfully named Weeping Top Keep, and we did have all the best intentions to go and get that done, but then we discovered a great big magical library, and it's not often that you discover a great big magical library, so of course we spent quite a lot of our time there. It was over here I think it was, yeah there we go, there's the library, it was all very exciting. I mean to get into the great big magical library we did have to defeat its guardian which was a kind of sort of great big rock monster type thing so that was quite exciting and we saw a few people level up as well which is always very nice but now we're back over here in the muddy raven arches and i think now we can go over here and do some exploring so here we go let's pop over to the star flats so let's go and scout these out so i think yeah we'll have everybody going to do that so right everybody off you pop everybody sort of healed up and such like incursion. Ah, right, yes, that's this thing up here that's been counting down. Uh, there's quite a lot of terrifying monster beasties. Um, okay, so Thrixel, in great number, moved to attack your lands, driving peaceful folks before them, levelling homes and hallowed places. What's a Thrixel? Well, I assume they're Thrixel, they look terrifying. Your enemies will travel from tile to tile, attacking and destroying sites, until they are defeated by heroes in combat, or repelled by defences you've built. Okay, we did build some defences last time, right where we were, just there, we put some defences together. Uh, the numbers will wear down, once incursion size reaches zero, the enemy will dissipate, and the incursion will be over. Okay, so where are they? Right, they're down here. Ah, and they're kind of heading up to that tower. So they're not going anywhere near our kind of defences. Botheration. Okay, they're going to travel to our towns, ruining, or if already ruined, destroying sites on the way. If all towns are destroyed, the game ends. Oh, crikey, you can fight incursions by gathering heroes at a site they're attacking. If you instead let an incursion run its course, ruined sites can be rebuilt. I kind of think like we should go and sort of, you know, fight the Thrixel warriors. I think maybe we should go and try and defend. Um, I mean, how long is it going to take to scout this place out? How long is that going to take? It's going to take 12 days. So nine days travel time, 12 days remaining. Okay, so that should be okay. I think we can do that. And then I think we can get back over here. I think we need to go and defend uh, sort of Rivnan Tower. Okay, so Star Flats has been revealed. Uh, so there's kind of, it looks very farmy. It looks very farmy round here. So what stuff do we get from this place if we were to occupy it? Looks like some leather and some more kind of iron stuff. And that kind of swirly thing. What was that again? What was the swirly thing? I can't quite recall what we got from that. It was like magical particles or something. Um, okay, I think what we should do is, I think we should head back up here and try and defend from this thing. I don't like the Thrixel warriors and I don't want them kind of running through our lands destroying everything. So I think we need to go over here. Maybe if we could set up some defenses, that would be quite handy. I like the fact that you can see where they're going. You know, they've kind of, you know, emailed ahead and told us where their path is going to be. But yeah, okay, I think... We need to gather over here back at Rivnan Tower. So yeah, 30 days travel time. Here we go. Let's go. Let's see what we can do. Now, there's no point trying to meet them down here because we're not even there yet. So we've not even uncovered that. Okay. So our enemies advance their plans over time. That terrifying monster beastie thing. Oh, that looks horrendous. Um, that's now stronger. So that's got plus 25% health. Okay. Let's stop that from happening because that sounds terrible. And... Um, yeah, let's stop that thing, whatever it is, from having 25% extra health as well. That also sounds very bad. We only have one legacy point left. Okay, right, finish that, please. And there's more cards being added. Oh, no. Oh, they've got whatever that gigantic, terrifying-looking thing is. Okay, no, right, fine. Okay, right, let's see. Can we just get back over here, please? Can we get back over to Rivnan Tower before these people attack? Okay, right, so we're here. So I think, can we prepare some defences? Okay, I think this might be a good choice. So there we go. It's kind of, you know, sort of uh, sort of uh, telling us what we want to do. So do we want to do tier one defenses, tier two or tier three? Okay, I mean, I'm thinking tier three. This might happen quite a lot. If they're going to try and come through that route to get to our little town, I think let's do it properly. So, uh, so yeah, I think let's go for tier three defenses, please. It might take quite a long time. So eight days remaining tier one defenses, 52 days remaining until it's all finished. Crikey, that is a long time. That's quite a long time. Do you know what? I think we have to do it. So, okay, let's see if we can get them set up by the time that these monstery things kind of arrive. Okay, it's looking good. I think we actually have got it. There we go. Tier three defenses have been built. 
So Jevanon's Hills, which is kind of this area here, are more protected against incursions. And that's very handy because there is an incursion sort of on the way. Right, I think we just need to kind of hang around here for a bit and try and fight the try and fight the monsters. So do we just sort of run time on a bit until they get here? Because I kind of think we should keep your heroes busy. Oh, okay, sorry, I was kind of waiting for the monsters to arrive. Time is an important resource on the Overland. Enemy Calamity card draws incursions and infestations happen over time, making your foes stronger. In general, you don't want to let any of your heroes idle. If you have heroes without any assigned tasks, consider using them to scout the tiles, build defences on a tile, secure cleared uh, sites, or build bridges or mountain passes. Okay, yeah, I know about that, but we're going to get attacked in a minute, and I don't want to sort of be wandering around the place and then have all these monsters kind of appear, because that sounds bad. Uh, okay, how about then? How about, can we go and gather over in Oakchuck? So all of you just go over there. It's only 14 days of travel time. You watch, the monster will pop in now. Right, so, oh, oh, look at that. There we go. <laughs> as soon as we leave, there they are. Um, okay, right. Let's go back over here then. Uh, right, okay. Gather back over here. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Can we cancel your orders, please? Um, hang on. What's happening now? Oh, they've got to make their way. Right, we've arrived back. That's good. Okay, right. Can we come back over here? Can we gather over here, please? Let's go and try and stop them because they're causing all sorts of problems. Oh, game, you told us to move away. <laughs> you said, hey, you guys should go away. Um, okay, here we are. Let's defend Rivnan Tower. Let's hope they've not caused too much damage. I mean, we have got the fortifications. We have got the fortifications in, so I'd like to think that should make a bit of a difference. Uh, okay, so let's go and try and defend. So yes, we will have all of you lot, please. I mean, yeah, Briglow does have kind of like a great big hammer type thing now. So hopefully that will help. Um, hang on, hang on. It says, all heroes on this tile will help defend it against the pillaging Thrixel. You have plenty of heroes here. So only three farmers will join the fight. Oh, do we get extra people? Do we get some farmers joining in? Oh, this is exciting. Right, incursion. The Thrixel have come. Bleeding into view. There they are. Okay, so here's some of our people. Oh yeah, look. We've got some farmers. We've got some good old, you know, good old regular folk coming in to help us. Oh, that's very exciting. How should the defenders respond? Let's not die lost in the hills, right? Okay, so this is going to kind of give us an advantage in the battle. So charge into battle, take the fight to them. That's what Betty says. 68% chance of success, possibly with that. Uh, Bernard says, use our knowledge of the land, um, harry their approach but there's only a 33% chance of that kind of succeeding. Or stay hidden until the last moment. Fight with cunning. I mean, that is quite clever. Staying hidden is very, very good indeed. Do you know what? There's a higher sort of chance of that sort of succeeding. And that is a kind of very bernard -y thing to say, because that's what he is very good at. So, yeah, okay, let's go for that one. I don't quite know what it's going to do. Concealed amid their surroundings, they elude the frustrated eyes of their enemy. Choosing the moment to strike is up to them. Okay, so Bernard's going, wait for it. And here we go. Let's see how we get on. Right, so we have ourselves a stealth combat modifier to begin with. So all heroes begin combat in grey plane. So I believe that means they are all hidden, which is brilliant. And then cunning, all heroes flanking attacks uh, this combat, uh, sorry, flanking attacks this combat deal plus one damage. Ah, so if we do some flanking, any time in this kind of in, uh, whole encounter, they're going to deal plus one damage. Oh, that's very good as well. Okay, yeah, wonderful. Oh, crikey. Oh, there's, there's lots of them. There's six of them and they look completely terrifying. Okay, so what have we got? We've got a mixture of thrusks and dweevers. Okay, so a thrusk, clambering and clattering, it cries out in doubled voice because, yeah, it's kind of got two heads. And a dweever, its head weaves in odd patterns. Eyes shine like moons. Hissing suddenly, it looms to strike. Oh my goodness me. Okay, okay, right. I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm very terrified. They've all got to be out there, surely. Okay, hang on. Hang on. Some of them are back here. Some of them are just here. We are all hiding. Okay, Bernard, can you see them? You can do a volley of arrows. Ooh, grey plane attack ignores all armour. Um, okay, local archers are supporting you for this fight. Tell them where to focus their fire. Archers can fire once every other turn. Oh, so we can do a volley of arrows just there and attack those two things. Okay, archers, fire, release, flight. Oh, Bernard, this is wonderful. Yes, okay, right. So massive great big volley of arrows. One of them is down already. Okay, 
we're one enemy down. So we're down to five. It's kind of turned into a shadow and it's going to fade away. Okay, that's really good. That is really, really good. I'm very happy with that. Um, so Bernard can't shoot because uh, he's, he's, I don't know, his view is blocked, is it possibly? I'm not entirely sure. Um, so if we head to here, which is kind of undercover, we can try and shoot at you. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's have a shot. There so you go, boom. So three damage, one got blocked. Okay, that's very good. Right now, Betty, what can we do with you? I think... I think we're relatively safe in here because look there's kind of a wall there and some rubble there kind of in the way so that thing can't immediately get to us I do not believe the only thing is that Betty can't do anything from range at all she's completely useless at that kind of stuff so uh so okay what do you want Betty to do I think maybe let's position Betty uh well I'm hang on a minute hang on Briglow can guard that back door but there is a kind of side door over here so I think maybe Let's put let's put Betty just there. So you can hop over there. She's still all kind of hidden, which is exciting. Um, and you can do Guardian. Right, and now we've got Bellway Stracklong. So you're one of our kind of other people, which is very good. So you can go just there and you can wait. That's good. Right, Briglow, you go just there and you do your amazing kind of Sentinel thing. And Barbara, are we able to kind of finish this thing off? Can we interfuse with anything useful? that's going to then kill this Dweaver thing down here. Um, I don't think we can. Uh, what if we do that? We can do a splinter salvo from that rubble. But can it see that thing just there? Can it actually get line of sight on it? Do you know what? Let's give it a go. We'll try and connect to that. And of course, we can do that again, can't we? We can interfuse with something else because Barbara leveled up last time and got that ability. Okay, so can we do a splinter blast? No. Can we do a discus? No. Okay, that's very unfortunate. So yeah, she can't do any of that kind of stuff right now. Okay, how about then, if you move down to here, because you're invisible, so you can sort of hide over here, and then can you interfuse with those chimes? There we go. We've interfused with some chimes. You can't do anything else right now. You need to wait for your turn to finish. And then we've got Fendia Aelin. Okay, Fendia, in case anything comes through that door, you go over... Oh, you're an archer. Actually, hang on. You're an archer. Could you pop down here, please? And can you have a go at this thing? Be good if we could take it out. I think it's dead. It's dead. Okay, we've taken two of the enemy out. However, there is another thing coming in from that direction, which we sort of expected might happen. Okay, right. So Barbara is still invisible. Can we... I don't suppose we can do any damage on anything, can we? No, we cannot. Okay, let us interfuse with those papers. Okay, look out when you get with papers. Okay. Barrels or papers. They cause the same... Oh no, hang on. Hang on. Well, they do cause the same damage. Okay, so go and interfuse with those papers. And then, can we do a splinter blast or a splinter salvo? Um, okay, select the focus. Oh, that just explodes. I see. That thing just then detonates. Okay, right. Not that then. Uh, a discus? Um, hang on. Select the target. Uh, hang on, hang on. Splinter Blast, then. I want that to do a split... Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, it's oh, there. Yes, it can get it. Okay, so, yeah, we have to say which thing we then want to be kind of, you know, sort of using our powers on. Uh, okay, let's put that just there. So there we go. So, one armor shredded, two damage. That doesn't have that much health. That thing I mean, looks horrible, but it's very, very weak by the look of it. Um, okay, Fendia, could you go to just here... And then could you shoot that thing? If you could take that out, that'd be amazing. Can we recruit you? Because <laughs> you're brilliant. Fendia, you're, you're welcome to join us any time you like. You're amazing. Right, you go up to here, Bernard. Um, and, okay, Bellway. Can you go... Oh, hang on. There's red stuff just there. And there is a red thing just there. Is that trying to give us a very subtle hint as to... As to I mean, what is that? What does that mean? Does that mean stuff's... Stuff's going to appear. It says, kill all enemies. More are coming. Okay, hang on then. Hang on. So if we go to here, we pop over to there, and we open that door, can we see any baddies? I mean, we are still invisible. So if we pop out to just here... No, I don't think we can see any baddies from there. Okay, right. So I think if we pop open this door with Briglow, and we go and have a look outside. Right, there is a beastie just there, but she is still invisible, which is fine. So I think... We come back inside, so we hop back inside, 
That thing is over there. We know it is. That's fine. Um, who are we now controlling? Yovan. Yovan Ravenscott. Great name. Okay, so if we go over here with you, right, there's another kind of beastie thing over there. But this chappy is still invisible. So I think if we run him to just there, whilst on grey plane, so while still invisible, that's got to be a good thing. And then, I think, Bernard, let's make you invisible. You go there and hide. And then Betty is still hidden. Betty is still hidden. So I think, could we move Betty up to, hang on, somewhere around here? Can Betty go just there? Because she is still kind of all sort of hidden away. So I think, or do we just put her over here? Let's put her there for now. So Betty can go there and she can do her guardian thing. Okay, so what are they going to do? So that thing is kind of popping around. It's going, oh, what's happening? Right, Betty just walloped that in the face and now it's been destroyed. Right, there's another one coming in from the south and that one coming in from there. And have they played another card? So have they now got another card coming in? Okay, kill all enemies. It doesn't say more are coming now. But yeah, I think that one just kind of teleport in or whatever. Okay, right, so Betty is now visible, which is unfortunate. Okay, Yovan, can you kind of... What can you do? Ah, hang on. We can volley of arrows again. Uh, I think... Yeah, let's volley of arrows this this thing just here. So here we go. Um, oh, oh no. Oh no, hang on. No, you need to move out of the way. <laughs> you might get hurt by the volley of arrows. You come back this way. Volley of arrows on you. Arrows! And boom. 14 damage. That's beautiful. That thing goes down. He is now visible again, but that's all fine. Okay, Barbara, can we now do Splinter Salvo on that thing? And there, oh, okay. I, I, I kind of did that entirely wrong and I've blown up a load of stuff. I'm, I'm sure it's fine. It's all fine. Right. Okay, hang on a minute. Fendia. So Fendia, we need to get you down here, really. You can't shoot at that thing. Can you stand, uh, I don't know, can you stand, how can you get line of sight on that thing? I think if you stand there, you can see it. So if you go and stand just there, and then you can take a shot at the terrifying beast. He said, there you go, it's dead. Oh, you're, you're amazing. Okay. <laughs> Our buddies are just absolutely amazing. They're fantastic. So I think now we've only got that one over there that we need to care about. So Betty, um, how about, yeah, how about you come out this way? And we'll go round here. So we'll pop round the corner. Hello. Uh, and then we'll do Guardian. So if that thing does come toward us, we can wallop it. Um, and then I think what we can do with you, Bellway, you can just go over there for now. You can sort of go and hide round that corner for a bit. So you can just finish your turn. Uh, Brigler, you've not done anything either. So you come out this way and you do your Sentinel thing. Um, Jovan, hang on. Yeah, so Jovan can come round this way. So let's sort of try and do a pincer movement on this thing as best as we can. And Bernard. Bernard, you are hidden. So you should be able to just sort of make your way over there. You're nice and quick. Okay, wonderful. Right. That thing is going to get a go. It's going to come down here. It's... Oh! It's interfusing. <gasps> it's interfusing with things. It's doing magic like we do. Oh, that's not allowed. Um. Okay, so Bellway, can you go to here... And can you hit that thing, please? Hit it, he hit. And it's not quite dead. It's not quite dead. Um, Bernard, can you fire at it? If you go to just there, Bernard, can you then shoot an arrow at that thing? Shoot an arrow and boom and dead, I imagine. Okay, so that thing dies and it's victory. Oh, well, done. thank you, Bellway, Yovan and Fendia. If you ever do want to join us, you're all absolutely amazing. And Bernard Beardman is now a Bloodhorn Hunter. So what level do they get up to? So he's level two, three, four, five, six. It looks like level seven is their top level. Okay, so Bernard has grown stronger, which is good for Bernard because he was a little bit flimsy. He's got a wooden leg, of course. So we can either upgrade Ambush, which could be useful. Ambush interrupts enemy movement. Ah, so as well as firing at them, it then stops them moving. Uh, we could get Tinker. Once per combat as a swift action, Bernard grants three armor and two warding to himself or a nearby ally for two turns. Three armor could be very handy. Endurance is passive. Bernard has plus two armor and plus one warding or jump jaw. Okay, what's this? Twice per combat as a swift action, Bernard throws a jump jaw trap that will deal two damage and pin the first enemy who walks near. Oh, oh, these are all really good. Can I take them all, please? <laughs> 
I'd like this one and this one and this one and this one. I want all of these because they're all absolutely wonderful. Um, okay, how about I quite like the passive endurance idea because Bernard is a little bit fragile and I think maybe giving him a little bit of armour and plus one warding, that's got to be a helpful thing. That's got to be handy. Yeah, that thing there is once per combat. So we could give himself three armour and two warding for a couple of turns, but that's kind of permanent. That's permanent. It's only, it's only for him, whereas that could be for anybody. But yeah, I think we might need to look after Bernard a little bit. So yeah, Bernard, you can have endurance. There we go. Okay, so your enemies improve. Yep, yeah, okay. So the, the Dweaver thing is now a bit stronger. Great, that's wonderful. Oh, look, there we go. It's a whole new class of terrifying monster beastie that we've not happened across. Right, so how are we looking over here in terms of incursions? 302 days until the next incursion. Okay, okay, that's fine. Right, so lurking gorgons are just there. And then, yes, we can't assault Weeping Top Keep because we have to get rid of the um, things here first. Do you know what? I think we're all okay, aren't we? Um, yeah, okay, let's go and do that now, shall we? Um, we must accomplish our other goals before we can start this fight. What? What other goals? What other goals? I want to go and clear that thing. Clear our hostile site. Our foes are gathered at Weeping Top Keep, but we must achieve our other objectives before we can face them. Uh, oh, okay. What other... Oh, okay. I kind of expected that we'd go over here. What other places? Just there, maybe? Okay, so it looks like we either have to go down here to this grassland. Now, the grassland down here doesn't have the kind of infestation thing on it, but the baddie sort of monsters that we just fought did wander through here. So maybe that is in a little bit of a bad way. Or we could go over here, but that does have the kind of Gorgon infestation type thing going on. I think let's have a little look down here, shall we? Let's see what's in this part of the world. So we are going to have to build a sort of mountain pass type thing. So here we go. Everybody sort this out, please. It'll be good to have a way through. Good for everyone, I hope. Good idea also to keep it watched and perhaps defended. Okay, so do we do it? No or yes? Yeah, let's get started. We can't get through any other way. So it's going to take 71 days. Yeah, okay, run time on. Let's get it sorted. I think, are we going to get another Calamity card popping up before too long? Are we going to get this finished before that thing? It'd be nice if we could go and have a look around here just to see kind of what state it's in. Because, yeah, the kind of, you know, the invading forces did go through it. Right, passageways open. So let's go down here and do some scouting, please. So we'll pop over here. Right, Calamities have come back. Um, the, uh, that, right, okay. So the Ragers are now going to leave a trail of corrupted ground. The Rixel are going to give themselves a terrifying, I don't know, terrifying, awful, bitey death wasp. Um, this thing is going to get extra armor to make it look even more horrifying. Or that thing is going to get like a, a kind of a stabby, weird mutant cow or something. I don't know. I think I, I don't like the look of that thing. I don't like the flying thing. So we'll keep two legacy points and we'll stop them from from getting the sort of the flying thing because it looks a bit scary. Um, yep, yeah, okay, carry time on. We need to scout down here, please. So let's have a little look around. What is the state of this place? We've been walking for hours. The light has faded to dusk. I think we're going in circles. I swear I've seen that tree before. I'm not sure I like this, says Bernard. And Bernard is a kind of hunting, scouting person. If he's struggling with the whole sort of, you know, scouting thing, that's a bit of a problem. Did you hear that? Says Bernard. That was just you stepping on a twig, says Betty. I guess that's what it was. Come on, let's go this way. Try to watch your step, twig stumper. Oh, Betty seems very confident. Suddenly, the path widens, spilling out into a large clearing bathed in starlight. Well, that sounds quite nice. Ooh, okay. Weird ghosty things are happening. Okay, no, this music, it calls to me. We should join them. No, Barbara, don't join them join them. That seems like a profoundly bad idea. They have no faces. <laughs> I'm with Bernard on this one. I'm absolutely with Bernard. Um, okay, so do we want to go and dance among the stones or do we want to go with Bernard saying they were all probably travellers just like us once and now they're trapped dancing eternally among these rocks. I think it would be foolish of us to just go and uh, do some you know, dancing amid stones with some terrifying faceless ghosts. Uh, Bernard, we're with you. Absolutely. My feet take me away from where my heart would lead. I'm sorry, Barbara, but maybe that would have killed you. I've got no idea. Oh, but there we go. Nothing happened with that. It was just a kind of a dead story event that we just avoided. So maybe, I mean, who knows? Maybe that would have caused us damage. Maybe they would have been friendly and we could have had a great big party. I've got no idea. Okay, 
So one prairie outpost, we need to put a station here to earn resources. Ah, okay, so there's nothing here at all. Uh, might bring some wealth to this poor region. We should help as we can. Okay, so Peak Falls tailoring families have selected this spot for an outfitter or a weaver works or even a well-removed tannery. Any of these would help the provincials prosper. Okay, so build a station, spend one legacy point, and then we get to choose what we want to do with it. So an outfitter provides hide and fabric, a weaver works provides two fabric, a tannery provides two hides. Okay, I think an outfitter. Let's get the best of both worlds. Let's get a bit of hide and a bit of fabric. That sounds like quite a good thing. We shall have an outfitter, please. Um, yeah, okay, let's go. Work on that, please. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Very good. And there we go. We now have the Clayian Outfitter. Okay, that worked very well. That was all very exciting. Right, so now, um, do we need to go down here to Quaintfield? Because, yeah, that's kind of our next thing, isn't it? We'd head down here. Um, yeah, okay. Let's go and scout over there then. We have nothing much else to do, so we'll go and pop over here and just see what's going on down here. Now, it is infested. Okay, Quaintfield has been revealed. It's kind of like a... Is that like a mine? Oh yeah, there's a mine occupied by lurking Thrixel. Okay, plus two ingots if captured and developed. Um, but yes, there are some Thrixel over here. Okay, how about we attack the Thrixel? Let's do that now, shall we? We're all on full strength. I'm sure we'll be fine. We haven't got our sort of other buddies to help us, but yeah, here we go. Let's go. What's the worst that could happen? Did you see the huge moth that landed in Barbara's hair earlier today, says Bernard. How could I not, replies Briglow. And you weren't going to say anything. Okay, Bernard looks sort of bemused by this. And Briglow just gives him a cheeky wink. They walked around with that thing sticking out at a jaunty angle for like an hour. <laughs> oh, I like the use of jaunty angle. That's what's good. They're having a little bit of a chuckle. You think you could tell a story? Huh? Says Briglow, looking a bit confused. I don't need my last thoughts tonight to be of Thrixel. Oh, says Briglow, not quite knowing what to do. Well, what would you like to hear? Okay, so tell me the one about the trickster moon. How about the Fire Queen and the Raindrop? Nothing too fantastic. Just tell me something that happened to you. Um, yeah, do you know what? Okay, that one. Yeah, what happened to you? Let's hear a story from her. So she's kind of pondering it, and she's pondering it. Okay, right, go on. Tell us a story. Briglow told Bernard about a blue jay who used to perch just outside her kitchen window. The bird's trust was more easily won than that of most wild creatures, especially with the nuts from Briglow's pantry. Sapphire. I called him. Jays demand regal names, you know. Yeah, absolutely. He always cocked his head as if he were listening. And there was a lot of time, oh, sorry, there was a lot of, uh, lot for him to hear. It was a time of breaking downs and movings on. Oh, Briglow. Oh dear. Things didn't go entirely well in your youth, did it? Okay, so she's sort of gone quiet a bit. Please tell me he doesn't get eaten by a cat next, says Bernard. Not that I saw. He did eventually stop coming. Funny thing though, the last time he visited, he bought me a present. Oh, a stone, not too big, but almost perfectly round. I kept it ever since, wearing its surface smooth with any worries or thoughts I have. <gasps> you got bought a little worry stone by a bird. Oh, that's brilliant. Ever giving you any good advice? Nah, says Briglow. It listens, and that's enough. Oh, I like that. Right, so we've got four of these Thrixel beasties, but that one there, so the Dweavers, are now going to hit a little bit harder. Okay, so we might need to take them out first. These things were quite flimsy, weren't they? They were quite easy. Um, ooh, okay, they're right here. Ooh, what's that? There's a stone spirit. Hello, stone spirit. Um, catch it quick. Oh, okay, we have to go and catch that. I mean, there are some obstacles in the way. Hang on a second. Uh, right, Barbara, maybe you could get out of the way. Um, Betty, can we go to just here, please? And can we hit that? Oh, hang on. Go to there and hit that Dweaver. Hang on, what damage do they cause? Um, they cause three to five damage, but now they're going to cause an extra plus one damage. So yeah, we do need to kind of pick on this thing. Uh, okay, Betty, you run up here. Get up here. Oh, it's revealed another one. Okay, right, and wallop that thing. Right, that's, that's not good. That's not good. It dodged out of the way. That is not helpful at all. Okay, um... Right, hang on a second. Bernard, can you shoot at that thing, please? We need to take it down. Okay, all right. This thing is now becoming invincible. Some scenery grants cover. Yeah, we're finding that out. Scenery that gives partial cover or good cover uh, provides protection to adjacent units. 
attacks passing through the scenery have a chance to damage the scenery instead of the unit. Okay, so that thing is not taking any damage at all. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so you can get to just there, but that's no use at all. In fact, that might give this thing another target. Or do we go and stand here and then just kind of wallop that thrust thing and then leave Barbara to go and deal with the Dweaver as best she can. Yeah, let's go and do that. So you go and hit that. Right, that thing is dead and we knocked it back as well. So that thing's exploded. That's really good. Right, Barbara, we need you to do some wonderful interfusing shenanigans. Uh, right, get into that barrel. So you interfuse with that. And then could you... Okay, splinter blast. Okay, explode a wooden object into a shredding blast of splinters that savages an area... What if we were to... Yeah, we can't do splinter, Salvo. Could we shackle? Could we shackle that thing to pin it into place? Um, it's only going to cause one damage, but at least that's going to stop it. Yeah, okay, fine. Let's try and shackle that thing. Oh, it took some damage. Okay, that's good. Right, it just walloped Betty for a bit of damage. That stone spirit's going to run away, isn't it? We're not going to catch that because there's a gajillion monsters in the way between us. Um, okay, Bernard. I think. Can you silk step? Um, oh, crikey. Yeah, there's nowhere. Hang on. Can you go just there? Silk step to there. And then can you... Uh, oh, hang on. We've gone to Betty. Okay, right. Betty, um, do a thundering challenge. Once per combat, Betty frightens the enemy, forcing them to spend the next turn running away. Oh, that could be quite good. Yeah. So you run away. So that thing's now going to clear off. Um, okay, that's really good. And then if we go to Briglow, bring Briglow round to here, say. And right, there's the other one. There's the other beastie. Right, so go and wallop that, please. Oh, it's dead. Okay, fine. It's going to run away and it's also dead. Uh, and then can we interfuse with... Okay, we're too far away to do any of that kind of stuff. Okay, hop over to there. Can we then interfuse with anything else? Right, interfuse with that lamp. Because I think that's all we can interfuse with right now. Okay. Right. We've interfused with the lamp. So now we can flare. Okay. Right. We're going to try and blind that thing. Right. Okay. So that thing has been blinded. So I imagine that makes it slightly less effective at doing the fighting. Right. Then we run over here. And then we can wallop that thing. And it's dead. Okay. Wonderful. Seven damage. There's a dweaver there which might possibly head toward... Oh, no. It's, um, it's interfused with something. That thing is running away. I do want to go and catch that. I want to go and catch the stone spirit because I don't know what it does. Um, Betty, can you, can you go to here? You are a little bit hurt, but you're okay. You're a noble, big, strong fighter type. Um, so I think, yeah, if we go and stand next to it, can we then grab that thing next time? If we just hop over to here, can we sort of grab it? Ah, here we go. Excitable little thing. Did you have to run so far? Uh, so far. Bree, bree, it says. It is adorable. Look at it. It's got like little sort of sort of amethysty sort of ears. Okay. So enchant tier one sword, replace with tier one stone sword, or get a legacy point. Oh, they're both really good. But we get legacy points from other things. We don't often get the chance to have enchanted swords. So um, yeah, make our sword all fancy, please. It just sort of stares at us. Okay, can we have a magic sword? Crimson strike. Ooh, okay. Yes, we shall replace... Oh, we're going to replace Stabby Stabberson. Oh, farewell, Stabby Stabberson. We're going to get Crimson Strike instead because it has a fancy effect. We'll call it Crimson Strike. I kind of feel like if we actually get a sword, we should keep its name. So, okay, we'll keep that. That thing vanishes. Okay, right. You go on to Guardian, please. Right, Briglow, you come up to here and you go on to Sentinel. Right, and then Bernard... Can you sort of run over in this direction? So you come over here and you shoot at that thing. So you fire at that and boom, four damage. Beautiful. Well done. And then we need Barbara to possibly come round here. Can we interfuse with that? Yeah, what's that thing? That's another lamp. That's a rock. Okay, can we interfuse with the rock? And then can we discus the rock into the monstery thing? And it caused four damage. Okay, right, it is now doing some stuff. Oh, oh, it's teleported. However, because it teleported into an area that we were kind of monitoring, we just walloped it in the face. Okay, that went perfectly. And everyone's got loads of lovely experience points. That was wonderful. An igneous sash. First sash, full of pockets. 
Oh, that's very good. Everyone loves a nice pocket. Okay, so Barbara already has a sash. I mean, it's bonus damage. And Briglow is going to be doing quite a bit of damage causing, hopefully, with the gigantic mallet thing. So, yeah, you have that, please. Okay, that worked out very, very well indeed. Someday, people will move back to Fellspring Mine, says Barbara. Thrixel husk will fall apart and their fog will blow far away. I hope so, Barbara. Children will find homes for spirits here. Young people will build barns alongside their sweethearts. Oh, Barbara, you're just adorable. Barbara, you're amazing. Um, old people will trade in iron and salt. And at the end, the oldest will die peacefully in their beds. The way it should be. Barbara, I love your view of the world. It's amazing. You seem quite keen on, uh, quite keen on it all. Thinking of staying, says Betty. It's too late for me. Adventure's been stirred into my blood, says Barbara. The best we can do is keep moving and hope to leave peace in our wake. Indeed, that's what we are trying to do. We're giving it a very good go. Oh dear, right. So the big terrifying sort of flying doom wasp thing that we tried to cancel before has now been added to the Thrixel deck. So we might possibly be coming up across those things at some point in the future. I don't like them. They look really, really horrible. I mean, I don't like the frog things either. And I definitely don't like any of the things that are coming up under the more thargy kind of deck because they just look all sorts of weird. But yeah, that thing is really unpleasant. But okay, right, there we go. So now I think, yeah, we need to secure this. So let's just get that done. Um, okay, do you know what? Do you know what? We've been kind of you know, rotating these. Let's, um, let's find an item here, shall we? Let's find an item. We're going to dissect the bodies. Okay, let's do that. So it's going to take us a while. 28 days remaining. That's okay. We can cope with that. So 28 days. I imagine, yeah, Betty's going to heal up as well over that time, which is very good. Um, yeah, these counters are looking good. So we've got ourselves a lovely item. What do we have? A thorough delving through the mysteries of Fellspring Mine has proven rewarding. Please, let's not fight over who gets the item. Okay, so everyone's going to get it back. That's all very good. Ingots, two. Okay, so we have a couple of ingots. Very nice. And we've got a gravel pelt sash. Okay, so plus 0.5 armour. Okay, so Betty could have that, or Bernard could have that. So Bernard has an armour of 3.6. Betty's got only 2.7. Oh, okay. You can have it then, Betty, because it makes sense for you to actually be a little bit more sort of armoured. And there we go. We've cleared this out. So we've sort of fought off a little invasion thing. We've come down here and built a nice sort of little outfitters. And then we've come down here, fought some baddies, and cleared Fellspring Mine, which is all very good indeed. So I think with that done, with that kind of success, you know, sort of, you know, ringing loud around the lands, I think we will finish things up for now. I think that's a very good point to sort of leave things for the moment. But yeah, next time when we come back, it looks like we're going to have to go up there and sort out that area because that seems to be the final place that we can get to before we then come down here and go and have a look around Weeping Top Keep. But yeah, it's going to take a while because you're yeah, going to go there, we're going to build a pass to it and then clear it out and deal with all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we'll see what we can do, but we'll do all that kind of stuff next time out. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Wildermyth. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. This robotic arm has salmonella on it. Okay, so we've got two things that are diseased. Be warned about tutorial robot. He's all sort of retro and adorable. I think he wants to destroy humanity. <laughs> Hungry humans, come and order some food. 74% efficiency, oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. There he is, there's the murderous robot face. 